Hey, what's up Blender users? I am Jonathan from Germany. That's why I have this weird accent. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can start making your own liquid simulations in Blender using the new fluid engine Mantaflow. But before the video starts, I want to take a brief moment to talk about all the engagement on the last video. I'm really thankful for that. This video got a lot of views, comments and likes and my channel is currently growing every day. And if you are right now not subscribed to this channel, definitely consider doing so because I upload every Saturday new and exciting content and you don't want to miss out on that. And with all that said and done, let's get straight into the video. Okay, in this video we are going to create the image I also used as a thumbnail. This was also something um, a lot of people requested under my last video that I um, show them how to make the thumbnail pics. That's why you can download last video's thumbnail file in the video description. And today I'm going to show you how I made this image. To get started, you can download Blender Mantaflow by going onto the Blender website and go over to download Blender 2.80, scroll down, get Blender Experimental, Experimental Branches, and then right here you can download the Fluid Mantaflow branch. Um, you don't have to install this branch, just unzip the folder and double click the Blender EXE file. I'm just going to scale up this default cube as a domain and to make the simulation I'm going to use a torus because right now we can see through the cube. I'm just going to go into wireframe mode and bring the torus a bit up and insert a rotation keyframe. Open a new window and go into the graph editor. Select the Z rotation, press N to open this modifier panel and add a generator modifier. Now we can see that this torus spins over time. Okay, now it's time for all the fluid settings. Select the domain and add fluid domain. And because this is a standard gas, we have to change it to liquid. Select the torus and also press on fluid and flow. Because we want to also be at liquid, um, change it to liquid and we also want it to be an inflow object. This means that it will emit fluid over time. I also want to check initial velocity and change the series to 2. Okay, um, that's it for the, for the inflow settings. Now select the domain. We have our resolution divisions right here and for a test bag I'm going to set these to 32. And everything else we can leave it as it is, but we want to enable show flip. The flips or flip are the particles which um, will be baked with this bake button. Mm, because um, the cache is, uh, is a standard set to an end frame of 50, you probably want to change that, but I'm going to leave it as it is right now for the sake of this tutorial. Okay, now hit bake data. As you can see, Mantaflow bakes really fast and also I think a lot better than the standard Blender Fluid engine. Okay, now press play and you, uh, we can see that we get the simulation. Okay, I'm just, just gonna set also my end frame to 50 so we can watch it in repeat. And yeah, this looks pretty nice. Okay, now we can either, either up the resolution divisions, which I'm gonna do right now. For the thumbnail, I used around 300, but now I'm just gonna go with 64. Okay, so now that it's baked, we can preview our animation again. And I think that this looks really, really cool. Okay, so next thing is that we have to bake the mesh. Because, of course, this is another fluid engine. And it also works differently to the old engine. In Mantaflow, we have to first bake the particles and then bake the mesh on top of that. So, check mesh and then you can hit bake mesh. We can, of course... Um, lower or up the mesh scale um, and the particle radius. This is all, you can all customize this to your liking. And because this is Mantaflow, it also bakes pretty fast. But for now, we're just going to leave it as it is and hit bake mesh. And something I want to mention, if you want to pause your simulation and preview it, you can just hit escape and you can always resume. Okay, we can see that this looks nice. Mm, of course, for a final simulation, I would hire the up factor just to get a better mesh. 
But for now, this works for me, so I'm gonna hit resume. Now that the mesh is baked, we can also preview it, how it looks. And for the sake of this tutorial, I think this looks just fine. What really bothers me right now with Mantaflow is that the mesh always gets displayed as a wireframe. And also if you go into the object settings and change the viewport display from wire to solid, um, it does not change anything. I don't exactly know why this is. We can just see it in the material preview and also in the render as a solid object. Mm, right now, I don't really know why this is a thing. If you know the answer, then please let me know in the comments because this really bothers me. Um, but I think right now, this is completely acceptable and Mantaflow in, in its current state works for me just fine. One major advantage of Mantaflow is also that we can bake more particles. So I'm right now just gonna change it to wire because otherwise you won't be able to see the mesh. And now go, now go over into Mantaflow settings again and open the particles tab. And as you can see, we can bake different particles, um, for example, spray, foam and bubbles. Right now, I won't change any of these settings um, but just hit bake particles. So when we now play the animation, we can see that there are a lot of more particles. And if you go over into the particle tabs, we can see that we have these particle systems right here. We can also enable combined export, but I won't do this for this tutorial. We can now render these as specific objects, for example, an icosphere, which I'm just gonna do in this tutorial. So make an icosphere, move, in, move it to the side, and now we can see under render, we can set it as render as an object and an instant object um, as the icosphere. And now we should have um, the icospheres right here. We can do this in theory for all the particle settings and this way we can add a lot more life to our simulation. So now when I go into the rendered view and also change it back to solid, we can see all the different particles. Of course, for a final animation, you would have to have a lot more particles, which are much smaller, so you can't really see any geometry. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna leave it right now where it is. So this is how you start making your own liquid simulation with Mantaflow. And now, just for a quick material, we can just stay in the principled BSDF and change the tra transmission value to one and roughness to zero and we get a nice water shader. You can also adjust the IOR, which is the index of refraction. Um, this defines how the light refracts in a certain material and from water it is 1.333. Um, so if you change it, this should be water. And now I also want it to be smooth and we get this nice water looking material. So this is how you can make your own liquid simulations using Mantaflow. I will leave the shading and lighting process up to you, but if you want to know how I did it, then you can download the project file in the video description. If you like this video, consider liking and subscribing, and maybe you also want to share it in your favorite discords or subreddits, because I personally don't expect this video to do as well as my last video, but if you want to change my mind, try so, and we're gonna see us in the next video.